I just read the most disturbing story maybe that I have ever read. Most disturbing news story. Now, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to go too into detail at all because this is just horrifying. It's by Mia Cathel on Town Hall. I hope I'm not mispronouncing Mia's last name. Headline tapes. We investigated a suburban LGBT pedophile ring. Here's what we found. And it's a story of these two guys, these two gay guys who are in a gay marriage, and they adopted children, two male children. They adopted the children from a nominally Christian adoption agency. Obviously, a Christian adoption agency that endorses same-sex marriage adoption, I, it would be hard for me to understand how that's a Christian adoption agency. But they do it, and then the guys just constantly raped the children, uh, just very young children. W- now that the, the guys have been caught, the children are ages 9 and 11. They bragged about raping the children. They made you know, all sorts of videos and things. They invited their friends to do it. That's, uh, if you want to read the grisly details, it's over at Town Hall. You can give it a read. Not for the faint of heart, so I don't necessarily recommend you do it. Obviously, these men, if they are guilty of what what they are accused of doing, obviously they should be executed. There's no question about that as far as I'm concerned. Even if you are a little worried about the death penalty, and even if you have objections to the death penalty, which I do not, I think the death penalty is perfectly just and legitimate and Christian and acceptable. But even if you do, uh, one... I I think, irrefutable uh, argument for the death penalty beyond mere retribution, which I think is ultimately the point of all criminal justice. But but beyond that, you you, you would have to say that for the purposes of protecting the public from the further predations of these animals, these absolute criminals, uh, the death penalty would be justified. At the very least, to protect people, if not purely for the purpose of justice and retribution at least to protect people. And you know, with the way that our justice system works now, if these pedos go to prison, well, if there were justice in the prison system, they would not last very long in prison. Uh, But if they did, if they did make it, you know, they'd be let out. You know, they'd be let out. We don't, we don't keep criminals in jail in this country. Not these days. They probably would be let out. And what would they do? They'd do it again. So sure. We, I think most, most reasonable people agree. These two men should be executed very swiftly for what they did. But when will we address the broader issues? Are we going to address the broader issue? Are we willing to end the absurd and barbaric practice of same-sex and single-parent adoption? And certainly when it comes to single-parent adoption, certainly single-male parent adoption. I think single-parent adoption generally should be discouraged, if not just made illegal outright. Certainly same-sex adoption should be illegal. A child has a right to his natural mother and father to, to, to be conceived within the context of a marriage and in the conjugal act of his parents. Uh, we know that there are something like 36 couples trying to adopt every newborn baby put up for adoption in the United States. There's no shortage of mommies and daddies married to one another who want to adopt babies. Okay, there's no shortage of that at all. And yet, because of wokeness and political correctness, we've got to say, no, well, we shouldn't discriminate against gay men or single parents who want to adopt. But of course we should, because it's not about the adults. Whether they want to satisfy the most horrific lusts they could have, or whether they just want a kid and they didn't get married and they just want to have a kid, we, we know that it is better for a child to be raised in a marriage, in a real marriage with a mother and a father. And so, At the very least, for newborn babies, where the situation is really, really straightforward, we should prioritize the children over the parents. No question about that. We're not allowed to say that. That's not politically correct. We're not allowed to point out that child sex abuse is much more prevalent among LGBT-identified people. I'm not saying all gay guys are child abusers. Obviously, that is not the case. The vast majority of gay guys are not child abusers. But the numbers are the numbers. The LGBT identification in the United States is 7.1%. That's according to Gallup. According to the Williams Institute at UCLA Law, so not some far-right think tank, according to a very liberal, storied institution, 20% of registered sex offenders identify as LGBT. We're not allowed to say that. We're not allowed to confront that fact because it's politically incorrect. So what happens? These stories pop up and you don't read about it anywhere. You read about it in town hall. Maybe you hear it on my show and that's it. And it gets buried. For what? 
so that we can continue perpetuating lies that harm all of society, that harm certain people specifically, but harm all of us when we are forced to live in a culture of lies. We should say no to that. 